That's the thing most people like make the biggest mistakes. They ramp mileage up way too fast. As soon as you ramp that mileage up, and that's when you start getting quad issues and right. plantar fasciitis. Mm -hmm. People things. run way too, way too fast, way too far. Yeah, like right off the bat. Yeah, and like I can't run. I always follow the rule of no more than. 10% increased mileage week right over week it's like my average run I either do an eight miler or a 10 miler every day and I'll do a longer run on the weekends that's higher mileage it's, it's taxing. pretty much run every day I'm running like five six days 14 days straight then I'll take a day off yeah that's the thing for me is I like the frequency mm -hmm. so then I'm trying to make sure that I'm not running too you know too far because I like to run every day I'm just trying to chill with it because I just see so many people get hurt and I just love it so if I get hurt I would be pissed <laughs> because I really I'm enjoying it I'm enjoying like going on these runs and stuff you know before I started doing this I never run probably more than like a mile now you know being able to run like five miles every day might not sound like that much to another person but for me it's you know it's I'm coming from nothing <laughs> basically I always tell people just turn your walk into like something that's recognizable to other people as like a jog. And just go really freaking slow. That's where you get all the benefits too, like zone two. Yeah. Zone three aerobic conditioning. There's like this this dangerous spot where it's people running faster than aerobic. Right. Or they're running, running slower than like critical velocity or mm -hmm. tempo. So it's this gray part where you're not getting the benefits of really anything and that's where most people run it's where i used to run when i first got started i wasn't getting faster i wasn't getting more efficient i wasn't like improving i was just running in this gray zone for yeah. months and months and months so what i found with these big marathon preps is you have like one workout during the week that is like refinement you have a long run on the weekends everything else has to be a like low zone two aerobic and if it's not it destroys your entire prep <laughs> So like that'd be super useful. Yeah, you need a lot of uh, like like boring, right? Boring. A lot of boring, yeah. Yeah, boring workouts. All right. I get a feeling there's gonna be a riot. I don't read the newspapers because they all have ugly print. At the starting. You always say that strength is never a weakness, and weakness is never a strength. Coming from a, a very competitive powerlifting background, how has running made you stronger? Uh, let's see. When I say running made me stronger, it's not literal, like it made me stronger in a deadlift, it made me stronger in a bench press. What about a stronger heart? What about a stronger mind? An ability to move your own body through space more efficiently. I like to carry strength throughout my whole life into my son, all the way into my daughter, all the way into my wife, all the way into my business. And when you build a lot of strength in your life and when you become more well-rounded and have strength oozing out of your body, not just from the weights that you lift, but from trying to carry that strength throughout everything that you do, you're left with no choice but to feel confident and to feel strong and to feel powerful and to feel empowered all the way to the point where you're able to empower a lot of other people. Okay, 5.68 miles, Woo. one hour, 42 seconds, 10.42, minute per mile pace. The best way, the best way to start a day is to wake up with the city. And we just woke up with the city of Austin, Texas. How are we feeling? It feels amazing. I uh, always liked getting up early. And for those of you that maybe aren't early risers, I would just suggest maybe you start out going a half an hour, or hour earlier than normal. It's amazing what you can get done in a day when you just wake up a little bit earlier. Yeah, there we go. That's booty, some of the booty juice. BPN, <laughs> Mark Smelly Bell juice. My socks are probably just like that right now. Oh, brutally, yeah, I can feel it in my feet. Solid morning, now to podcast. Now, before we dive any deeper into this video, I wanna let you know it is sponsored by my good friends at Helix, who make customized mattresses to fit your unique needs and ship conveniently right to your door. Now, as I've talked about many times before, we have a Helix mattress in every bed in our house. And we personally have the Helix Midnight Lux. And we came to the conclusion of putting a Helix Midnight Lux on every bed in our house through a very convenient quiz they offer on the website. Now, when you take this quiz, it's gonna help identify the best mattress for you. And it's gonna ask a series of questions. Like, are you a side sleeper, a back sleeper, a stomach sleeper? Do you sleep by yourself or with someone else? 
Do you have pain while you sleep? Do you prefer a soft, medium, or hard mattress? And based off of your responses, it's going to recommend the best mattress for you. Now some fun facts about Helix. One, all the mattresses are fiberglass free. They offer a 100 night sleep trial and a 10 year warranty. They also offer flexible payment programs and financing options to make it very easy and convenient for you. So if you are looking to upgrade your mattress, go to helixsleep.com slash Nick Bear. And right now is a great time because they are offering 25% off plus two free pillows during their Labor Day sale. And it's a very simple, convenient process. You go to the website, you take the quiz, you find the best mattress for you. It's going to ship to your house in this small box that you're gonna open up, let the mattress expand before your eyes, and then put it on the bed where it needs to be. Thanks Helix for sponsoring this video. Check out the link in the description One, box below. Two, now let's get, get back down. to mine. Cause to be the boss. Paid the cost to be the boss. I paid the cost to be the boss. Look at me. You know what to see. See a bad mother. Look at me. You know what to see. See a bad mother. When you and me were training back and forth, we never asked each other mm -hmm. how many reps we were going for. Right. So like we, we let the weight dictate how many reps Absolutely, we were doing. Yeah. That's kind of all, always the way I've approached training. It's like I don't go into a set thinking I'm gonna do 10 reps here. It's I'll throw a weight on there and then based off that weight, that'll dictate. See how it feels. Yeah, based off how, how it's feeling, how many reps I'm gonna do. People don't understand how important your strength to weight ratio is. It's one of the greatest attributes that you can build. Nick has a tremendous amount of strength relative to his body weight. He's got like a lot of relative strength. And I think that for myself, it's important for me to work on, even though I've been really strong in my life, I need to build more relative strength, meaning I need more strength uh, as it relates to my own body weight in stuff like pull-ups, in something like running, like for one person who is explosive, for someone who's on the thinner side and kind of strong, them jumping up and down off of a box, even on one foot, is not challenging at all. But for somebody else that doesn't have a good uh, strength to weight ratio, that's gonna be really demanding. Right. And them just even, even them just, you know, running and landing on one foot, it's like it's gonna kind of hurt. It's gonna, they're gonna kind of feel heavy. And I think a big important thing with running is over time you should feel uh, lighter and smoother and faster. Uh -huh. Even at the same weight. Even at the same weight. Yeah, and that's another thing I think you've done a good job of because you're not skinny. Right. You know? Like it's 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 kind of you know it's it's cool to build that strength whatever way you can get it. But we see a lot of runners who are traditionally kind of just skinny, mm -hmm. and they're good at just running. But it's kind of good to be a little bit more in the middle where you're a hybrid, right? Oh, that's way too much weight. It's beating me up in his own place. So I was listening to uh, the Huberman and Andy Galpin podcast the other day, and uh, it was really refreshing to hear Galpin actually in that series talking about how using momentum during strength training is not necessarily a bad thing. Oh yeah. Because I've always trained with a little bit of momentum, but people are so afraid of, like they think a bicep curl needs to look like this. Right. You know, but like I get some swing in there and there's just as much muscle activation. Well, people are like, oh, you're starting to work other muscles. I've always been like, that sounds like a bonus. Yeah. <laughs> sounds great. <laughs> Like, is that what I'm in the gym for? Like, it doesn't have to just be my bicep working. Got 
kind of great. The whole back of the machine is like bending. <clears throat> yeah, this, this machine has seen some, uh, some better days. I find that this is a movement that a lot of people struggle with. Do you have any tips for cues? For basically any of the lat exercises you do, you have to realize like one of the big functions of the lat is actually to like push your shoulders downward. If you push your shoulders downward, you'll notice that automatically your chest will come up. So you just take your shoulders, like they might be like up here, you can shrug them up and I'll just push them down and push them down as hard as you can. And it, even if you push them down onto something, if I'm just here, and I just lightly start to push down, it arches my back automatically and engages the lats. You think about kind of working kind of, I guess from the elbow, once you go from here to here, that's starting to really kind of activate that lat muscle. If you go like on even like a seated row, you just go like really light. Reduce that weight a bunch. Just focus on keeping the shoulder like away from your ear. Keeping your shoulders down. Just staying in here. You'll feel your lats working. It's almost like I'm trying to rub my hand along my own leg. So the arm angle's low. You just like right here. Going back to like the curiosity of movements with training, especially bodybuilding, I'll do different rep variations with movements. So for the last couple months, what I've been loving is for dumbbell bicep curls, for example, I'll do five to six reps, just traditional like this, and I'll do as many reps as possible, hammer curls. So I'll show you what that looks like, but just have fun with it, just experiment. There's no prescribed rep and set range that I'm going for. I'm just kind of feeling and experiencing the way that it's simulating the muscle and then just enjoying it. Yeah, there's gotta be some challenge on the muscles. And other than that, you can kind of make up the rules on your own. Ladies and gentlemen, that was an episode of the Hybrid Tapes with Mark Bell. We hit the run, we hit the pod, we hit the lift. That's as hybrid as it gets. As always, thanks for tuning in. Go one more and what you got? I'm Mark Smelly Bell. Strength is never a weakness. Weakness never strength. Catch you guys later. Whoosh.